In this video, I'm going to be showing you the tips and tricks that I use on a regular basis to speed up the playback in DaVinci Resolve 19. My name's Dan, and you're watching DaVinci. We need to speed things up. Okay, so the first tip I thought I'd just go with the most obvious is your timeline playback resolution. Now you can actually change this on the fly. If you go to the top here and click playback and click timeline playback resolution here, and you can see here, you can do the full resolution. And in my case, that's 4K, then half that resolution. So that would be something like, you know, 2.7K and then quarter resolution, which would then be 1080p. That's just an example. It gives you an idea of what this does. When you change this to quarter resolution, obviously this lowers the resolution of your timeline or it crashes your PC. Recommendations from Dan Vinci. I know how to break your computer straight away. Right, so we have our shot here at full resolution. Let's just zoom in. Let's go on to playback, timeline, playback resolution, click quarter. And as you can see, there's been a real reduction in the actual quality. Now you will find this, if you have a lower end computer, this will be an absolute game changer. And you might not need to do any of the other changes later on in this video, because this just does wonders. As you can see here, I've actually set shortcuts on my keyboard so I can quickly toggle this on and off so that if I'm going into the color page and I want to just make a quick change, I can flick it back to full resolution without having to you know go into the top left corner and click you know all of these buttons and then immediately change it back i'd recommend doing this just go into your keyboard shortcuts and search timeline playback resolution it'll come up you can just program in whatever key that you want it's just fantastic okay number two is render cache now if you don't exactly know what render cache is it's effectively telling the computer to generate optimized media in a sense in the background while it's idle so when you're not editing and you walk away from your machine to have the you know a nice coffee or fish and chips or you know doodle think about your life and why you do editing for a living, it will be generating render cache. If you turn it on, you can see this. So in the top left corner, in the same place as, you know, timeline playback resolution, you'll see just below it, render cache. Now here you'll have three options, none, which is what I usually have. I don't tend to use render cache because I don't really need it. But here we have smart and user. Smart is effectively the computer working out what it should render cache and user is sort of you telling it to render cache manually. And I think it does just generally just render cache everything. You can see here, it's rendering a graphic, right? And if we go on to the blue bit here, it should, yeah, there you go, run fine. As soon as it hits this red, there you go, it'll lag. The frame rate will just drop massively. And the same here. So if you can see it's not render caching here, if we right click on it and go down to, where is it? Oh, I've forgotten, it's been too long. So if you right click on the clip, go over here to render cache color output. There you go, that's the one, <laughs> forgotten. There you go, just give it a minute, make sure that everything's idle and it should do its thing, I hope. There you go, it's done it and it runs and playback's fine. Now the only downside to this is obviously in the background it's generating files and it does not auto delete these files. So you'll have to go into the file explorer, find out where you've set the render cache to be. Usually it's on this PC by default if you haven't set it and then delete them. That's why I don't really use them because it fills your computer up with crap. But if you've got loads of storage and you know you're a storage king, you'll be fine until you run out of storage and then you'll need to buy more storage. Number three, another obvious one that I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, but is crucial. And that is rendering in place. Now rendering in place was introduced back in, I think DaVinci Resolve 17. And my God, was it big. Rendering in place is just brilliant. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. So as you can see here, we've got our graphic, right? And if we click play on it, we're getting like 23 frames a second. So if we right click on the clip, click render in place, and then set to whatever codec you want, we can do H.264, or we could do GoPro Cineform. GoPro Cineform is fantastic for alpha channels. So if you have a transparent background for something, for example, use this codec, but I recommend doing H.264 or H.265 for just everything else. Then just click on render and then select where you want to save it. Then this little pop-up will come up. Unfortunately, you can't edit while it's rendering in place. Yeah, just be patient and wait. <laughs> okay, so once you've waited an absolute age, you will get, and I guarantee you, crystal clear, you will get smooth playback. Now, if you render in place at the quarter playback resolution, you will have an issue where you will render in place and it will be blurry because it will be rendered in that quarter resolution. There is several ways to get around this. When you right click render in place, there is a little button that says render at source resolution or before clicking render in place, you just quickly change it back to full resolution and then render, but that's just something to bear in mind. Okay, so the next one is generating proxies. Now, if you don't know what proxies are, they're effectively a clone of your media files that are identical identical in name and length, you know, the exact same files, only one is a lot smaller than the other. Now there is an obvious like drop in quality. I wouldn't recommend grading with, you know, proxies, but if you have a slow machine, you can generate proxies beforehand and then edit it and it's a lot smoother. Here we have some clips, right? So let's select all of them, right click, generate proxy media, and then this will just generate the proxies like that. 
Right, so when you've generated proxies, you'll see that the little symbol appears right here. And for whatever reason, if this isn't showing, if you go to playback and proxy handling, make sure it's not undisabled, because if you disable it, you know, it'll disappear. Now, if you want to know where these proxy files are actually going, if you go into the little cog here and go over to master settings and go down to proxy generation location, you can, that's a pretty cool name. The proxy generation location. Uh, you can click on browse here it'll open its location as to where those files are going now for some of the settings that you can change to speed up the you know general playback so let's go into preferences in the top left corner down to preferences here and let's go on to memory and gpu now here you have the controls to basically tell davinci resolve how many resources from the hardware that you have in your pc to well use so for example if your memory configuration is you know, quite low, you can crank it all the way up. Now, I like to obviously crank it all the way up to max because when you're editing, you're not really running Blender and, you know, anything else in the background. You're just editing. So I just crank it all the way up. Now, below that is also the GPU configuration. Now, the GPU configuration is fantastic in DaVinci Resolve because you're able to just select multiple GPUs if you want, but bearing in mind that's only in the studio version. Now, I'd recommend using the settings you see on screen right now, simple as. And just before this video ends, another quick little tip to, you know, increase playback in the fusion page is just right clicking here and you can turn off high quality and you can turn off motion blur this just generally speeds up everything obviously you won't see the motion blur in your preview over here but it does just generally speed things up just a little bit it doesn't make a massive difference but it does help then if you go into the top left corner click on fusion fusion settings make sure you're in general and what's really really handy here you can increase the proxy here and this does make scrubbing just that little bit smoother when you're you know scrubbing through the timeline just thought i'd throw that one in there i almost forgot about that one actually but yeah, that is generally how you can speed up the playback in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know your thoughts. I hope this has been helpful for you. But yeah, let me know if you're stuck with something in the comments. I do try and reply. But otherwise, that is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Otherwise, I will unsubscribe from you. Neutrally assured destruction. So you better subscribe. Let's get to 20,000. I want to get to 20,000. It's a big number. We're approaching it. We're already at basically 16K. How mad's that? My name's Dan, and you've watched Dan Vinci. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. That's why in this video, I'm going to be showing you the tips and tricks that I use on a regular basis to slow down. To slow down? Not to slow down. Don't want to slow it down. I want to speed it up. Ah. Uh.